the Kathleen McAnany host, host of Koi Gig, is with us. Um, relatively excited this morning, Kathleen. Yeah, I think that he came screaming into the office this morning, being like, Oh, I think, think your mic is switched off, is it? Are we switched off? Oh. Yeah. Switch is on there. That's how excited everything is. Kathleen pointed out as well earlier that she, she has worn the Irish colours into the studio. I've inadvertently worn blue, which I should have really thought about considering Scotland are the opposition tonight. So Every other night you could get away with it just being Monaghan colours. But true, so, actually, yeah. But yeah. today, sadly not. I didn't even actually plan this. This was just purely a coincidence in my general state of mind. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> somewhere apologies. deep in the subconscious it's there. Um, like, uh, Dunphy's in the paper today saying that this could spark a new uh, Katie Taylor moment. I think it's actually different to that because it is team sport and he's making the point that, um, you know, our great athletes, uh, female athletes of the last decade have all been individuals as opposed to maybe the Ireland hockey team and the, the Cork footballers were the great women's teams. But this is a crossover moment where, like, it's actually very like the Euro 88 campaign where... There's going to be a big game in Hampden Park that um, in many ways helps to define whether or not we're going to make it. Plus, it's a World Cup. Like, it's a World Cup. It's not just the Euros. It's a World Cup. Yeah, I think this could be something. And I also think that, like, when Katie Taylor broke through, the sport was in a very different place. Like, boxing, especially women's boxing, and our knowledge of it in Ireland was in a very different place. Whereas, like, we know this team. We know these players. You know, you already have people walking around with McCabe jerseys or Sullivan jerseys or Quinn jerseys or whatever it is. This team is already in, like, the public consciousness. It's We already have quite strong feelings about them. So, if anything, I think it's going to be an even bigger moment if we do qualify, when we do qualify. Um, and I think, like, we've seen it whenever Ireland go to these major tournaments, even, like, take the example of the Irish women's hockey team a couple of summers ago. That was a sport that not a lot of people paid attention to. That was a sport that not a lot of people would have known the names of before that. But the absolute turnout, the excitement around it. Imagine that with this women's team now when we actually know all the players. We know Vera Powell. We know what they are capable of. I think it would just be sensational. Uh, let's talk a little bit about Scotland, OK? Because we are in the midst of an injury crisis at the moment and Scotland have lost their best player through retirement. But actually... They've had a good, solid campaign to get to this point. They're going to be feeling pretty confident about the fact that it's an Ireland team, short of several of our top players, maybe not our best players, but certainly uh, first choice. So uh, I think they're going to be feeling pretty confident in advance of this game. Definitely, and I also don't think the Kim Little being missing matters all that much to Scotland anymore. She's been retired for long enough that the story has moved on for them. They, they're they not thinking about her as much, even though she is a fantastic player. Um, it definitely was a massive loss to them. They are, they are confident. Like, I was reading Caroline Weir and uh, Massa Lopez talking about it before last night, before the match, and they were saying that, you know, mentally they're in a really strong place, physically they're in a really strong place. They have no injuries, so they have their first-choice squad. Uh, they were looking at us and kind of saying that we had a good, like, run-up to this but, and that they expected us to play quite a direct style and an attacking style, which I thought was interesting because I don't think we've ever really watched Ireland and thought, ah, yes, direct attacking play. Um, and I think... What's interesting about this Scotland side is like they were down and out after the World Cup. You know, that was pretty disastrous for them. Three losses. Uh, the manager at the time, Shelley Kerr, like gave this explosive post tournament. Um, so it was talking down to the players and like even afterwards admitted that she'd gone out for dinner and like had a few drinks and it was probably a bit more explosive than she intended it to be and since then it seems like they've been trying to like repair themselves and obviously they didn't qualify for the Euros and then Pedro Martinez Losa has come in and he seems to have taken a very holistic approach to this side and really worked on like building mental strength not all that dissimilar to what Vera Pau tried to do with the Ireland team um, like I was reading I don't know was it in one of the Scottish I think it was in one of the Scottish papers earlier that he has uh, post-it notes of different colours and like uses those to track like players moods per day and stuff so he can like see day to day how players moods are tracking and if they're like going up or if they're going down and that's how he makes sure that everyone in the team which I thought was kind of interesting mm -hmm. and a very kind of almost rudimentary way of going about things, but, I mean, if it works. Um, and that's the one thing that they have been talking about constantly throughout this qualifying process, is, like, mentally this team is in a really good place. They know that if they go and they win tonight, they deserve it because they put in the hard yards. And, yeah, I, I mean, 
listening to Caroline Weir say that she's excited to play against Ireland and that she feels like she might have a banger in her is never exactly what <laughs> I, anyone wants to hear going up against a player like her. I actually hadn't realised that Martinez Losa had signed Kitty McCabe for Arsenal in, tw- in 2015. So there's there's an, a massive air of familiarity here between the players. Like it, it, but it's one of those things we know Katie and Denise O'Sullivan are going to be targeted and kicked off the pitch in in some ways. Like, but it, because they're more familiar with these players than perhaps the Slovakians or, or the Finnish players, it's going to be a little bit more touchy. Um, like, is Katie the type of player that enjoys that sort of attention, or is that? Off putting for her, like she seems like the type of character that can that can rise above it. So hopefully, any Scottish kicking doesn't put her off too much. Yeah, I think she enjoys it to a certain extent. Like obviously, she she's come off the pitch a few times and kind of given off about the fact that, that her legs have been taken out from underneath her how many times. But I do think it fuels her to a certain degree. I mean, you watch her play for Arsenal and she loves getting into a bit of a feisty in exchange with someone. And I mean, her yellow card count alone would probably tell you that she does like that feisty side. I think it'll be particularly interesting to see her and like Aaron Cuthbert because they have matched up against each other quite a few times in the WSL um, and they always go for each other like it I, I mean I'm sure they're probably ground off the pitch but when they're on the pitch it's like a proper rivalry so it'll be interesting for the two of them. I think with Katie and we saw that a lot throughout the qualifying process and even yesterday when I was listening back to some of the press conferences, she refused to get excited or drawn into any sort of emotion pre-post-match. It seems like she channels everything into her play on the pitch and that's where she lets herself be exposed. And, and I don't mean exposed in a playing sense, I mean in an emotional sense, and that's where she gets everything out. Um, so I think if she can harness that properly tonight, then it will serve us very well. I think there's an element of the the whole Sean Boylan thing, like stick your shyness in your back pocket. I need. I think we need to stick any negativity in the back pocket tonight. Like just have the confidence because from the outset of the group, we knew Sweden were going to top the group. So the playoffs were always going to be on on the. It's not like this is a surprise that we're now here and oh, magically we need to get up for a playoff. We've been as a team probably preparing for playoffs for for quite some time. So as Vera Power said, like the team are are ready for this. You would imagine. Yeah, definitely. I think. Uh... If anything, the few injuries may have been the thing that mentally might have given us a bit of a wobble. I actually don't think the way we've played at all in the last few months will be because I think we've been relatively as good as we expected to be, if not maybe a tiny bit better at times. Um, It's unfortunate that we have the injuries that we do, but I also think that... This is something actually that I was reading because Vera Powell obviously started out her coaching career with Scotland and I was reading a past player who didn't actually play with her but would have known quite a lot of the players who did and she was saying that uh, there was some anger. Some people loved Vera at the time because she played the same team and she came in and over the time she was there she did actually bring Scottish women's football on quite a bit. And then some players absolutely did not like her because she, once she had her starting 11 or her like core squad, it was very, very hard to kind of muscle your way into that. And I found that interesting because what we've seen from her throughout this whole tour, particularly this qualifying process, is that she has stuck to who she wants. And she's brought players in on the fringes, but it, it has been quite hard to break into that core squad but she's kind of been forced to do that now with the fact that we have had so many injuries over the qualifying process so I'm kind of interested to see how that serves us longer term in the hope or in your positive thinking way Shane when we qualify for the World Cup and when we go to Australia exactly. and New Zealand next year I love that it's, it's all about positive affirmation so um not not wanting to risk a Kevin Caban Nations League moment here but going to anyway teetering out onto the onto the ledge What are the permutations tonight, Kathleen? Oh, you're throwing it to me. Okay, well... (laughs) Get the calculators out. So, six o'clock, we have Portugal and Iceland, Switzerland and Wales. Ideally, we need Iceland and Switzerland to lose because they're ahead of us at the moment. Uh, And we also need a win. Like, regardless of what happens, Ireland need a win tonight. So the three winners are ranked off your results in the group stage of the qualifying campaign and in their playoff final. And it's the top two from the table that book their spots. So Switzerland are on 19, Iceland are on 17, and Ireland, or sorry, Iceland are on 18 and Ireland are on 17. So if Switzerland or Iceland win their playoff on penalties, they would only have a point added 
because for some reason that's a thing that they do in these playoffs. They don't give them the three points, just give them the point. Uh, and so that will be classified the draw. So if we win in 90 minutes, that's good for us. And if the teams are tied on points, it then goes to goal difference, which is based on, again, the qualifying and also these matches. Then to goal scored, away, away goal scored, and so on. And we are level on goal difference with Iceland, three clear of Switzerland, and lead the way on goal scored by one. Okay, so if they go through on penalties and we win, we're through. Yeah. Uh, if we win and uh, they win in 90 minutes, then we're going to a playoff. Yeah. Okay. And we basically need one of those two teams to lose it's the dream situation and we win our match and we're home clear and if not and if one play. of those if one of those two loses and we win on penalties it doesn't matter a jot we're we're through that's the just like, win basically and we'll, we'll, we'll stay win. alive win to stay alive that's every time someone asks me about the permutations I'm like just win just win the <laughs> just game, win first, the game first and, foremost. and then we will see where we we'll go we'll essentially know at half time of the Ireland game what, what our result will mean but the, like the farcical thing and whispered quietly but the farcical thing is that all these games aren't being played at the same time and the Katie McCabe kind of referenced it yesterday like in the interest of fair play and sport we should have been on at the same time as the other teams. Well, this is the exact same point that um, Stephen Kenny was making with Joe Malloy last night. Yeah. It was like, we're not playing in the last round of group games. It's absolutely farcical. So it turns out that it's very difficult to organise these. But it's balanced out in the, in the men's game where we're getting screwed fair. over and in this one we're getting kind of a bit of an advantage almost. So, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Like, obviously, if it was the other way around, we'd be quite annoyed yes. that we wouldn't know what's happening. Will I take the advantage today? <laughs> I will. And I'm not saying that for any bad karma to come my way later on, but I think we've had such bad luck with qualifying and some of it has been like self-made, other things have not been self-made. So I think we deserve this little bit of luck and hopefully it will... Give, I mean, chances are the players probably won't even like look themselves to see. I don't know. Like if you're a player, do you want to know what the score is or do you want to just like fully focus? It's probably kind of dependent on... <clears throat> yeah, I guess it's case by case and some of them will some of them will want to know and some of them will use it as further motivation as like one goal here and we're going through and yeah. like as soon as somebody in the team knows that um, it's going to go uh, through the team like wildfire. So uh, one of the things that we have been good at in this campaign is not beating ourselves. Like it has been less self-inflicted than in previous campaigns. Has Vera Pau managed to totally take that out of the team? Um, I don't want to say she's managed to totally take it out of the team because I think those scars are still there and I think the team has been using that as motivation in this qualifying process but there have been some iffy moments and even I was watching Courtney Brosnan a couple of weeks back play for Everton and like Courtney Brosnan has come on leaps and bounds she's been incredible but there was a similar kind of like ball hop over the head moment that we'd seen before for Ireland and it just put a little bit of fear in me so I I never want to say that we've like totally eradicated those things because I do think it is a longer process I have a lot more faith in this team than I did before I used to watch it like kind of with my hands over my eyes kind of slightly seeing out through my fingers because I was anytime a ball would be played I'd be worried about a miss pass or it's just something silly, whereas I don't have that anymore. Um, it's just, I mean, it's difficult, you know, when the nerves set in, you just don't know what you're going to do or if you're just going to have a flash moment of silliness. And I don't want to say we have completely eradicated because I feel like that's just asking for something to happen later on. <laughs> Does the crowd of any, like I know they had a, a record attendance at Hamden for the Austria game and expected to break that again tonight and probably difficult for Irish fans as we said to get over given the uh, the late notice as to who we were playing, the Celtic game being on as well so I guess the flights and ferries are fairly full heading over to Glasgow for the, for the for today and tomorrow uh, to come back home but like I don't know what impact the crowd is going to have but atmosphere will be important Kathleen. Yeah, it will. And I think, I, but I also think that we have, we've shown that when we travel, we're actually quite good at getting a result. And obviously having your own crowd there is really important and they've made Tal a bit of a fortress for themselves. But I don't think it's going to be one of the defining factors of tonight. Mm. Um, especially, I think, because I think there's an expected turnout of about 10,000 in Hampton, which is great because it's like hitting up on those record numbers that they saw last week for the Austria game. But it's, for me, having been in those situations before, I don't think it's enough to build a, an entirely threatening atmosphere. Um, so I don't think it'll be too much. I think we should be able to just focus on what we're doing. I uh, thought it was interesting as well. They didn't 
packed as any penalties last night in the training session that they had. So they're clearly spies watching. You see, aiming for the win. I, I have a feeling that there's going to be someone like an, an there's going to be like an Alan McLaughlin moment. Someone's going to step up. Abby Larkin, 17 year old Shelburne teenager, off the bench to score a winner. Someone we weren't expecting necessarily to do something crazy. Well, it could happen because I mean the talk. The general talk about the team is that she is the likely one that will come on a bit later, yeah, maybe yeah. her or Quinn, um, to like get that last minute. And I mean, what a story that would be! That would just be great, and it would show, I think, where this team has gone over the last few qualifiers. Like, I just bringing Pow has done a good job of bringing in players like her, like Elle Malloy as well, and I think. For someone like her to get it, it'd be great. It's going to be that or it's going to be a Louise Quinn header. Realistically, that's what we're looking at. <laughs> <laughs> Just to, uh, you know, puncture all of this a little bit, the odds are heavily in Scotland's favour. Their odds on Ireland are <clears throat> as big as 3-1 to one or, or bigger in Didn't most places. That, right? Yeah. yeah. So this is not 50-50, oh, even no. though... Well, we've um, played them 21 times. It's the team we've faced the most out of any other country and they've won 12 of those. The majority, I'm not sure what the split between is for draws and losses, but the majority of the rest are draws and then losses for seems us. Seems so. long. Have the bookies got got that wrong? Like the book, that seems fairly long for Ireland, given that the the, the, the the recent games have been fairly tight affairs. Yeah, still. I just think that probably Scotland, with not having any injuries, home with advantage. having home advantage, Cuthbert and Weir are such good players, um, and even players like Martha Thomas is in there as well. You know, they have a good few high-class WSL names. And so we probably... where, where plays for Real Madrid? Yeah. Have they any other superstars that people should be looking out for? Um, I think probably Rachel Corsi is not necessarily a superstar, but she's their captain and she's been there a very long time and is a very, you know, almost like a Louise Quinn, Nifahi sort of figure, very right. experienced, very good. Uh, Lisa Evans also plays in the WSL. She was with Arsenal, she's with West Ham now. Um, used to go out with Vivian Miedema, so you know, has has the insight to mm -hmm. that tactical sort of brain. Claire Emsley as well, she also played over in the WSL and now plays in the NWSL, I think. So they have, like, these are big names that you would recognise if you watch the WSL on a weekly basis and probably a bit more experienced than some of the players that we have. Um, but at the same time, I do think we have a lot of talent in there. I mean, even someone, you look at our back line, it's pretty experienced. Um, we have the Megan Campbell throw. If we want to throw something in there that they are not expecting. Uh, then the, you look at the Abigail Harrison goal, that, like in, when you're trying to pick things out that the Scots could maybe do well, and I know maybe the Austrians lost her in the floodlights a little bit. Uh, but when you look at Fahey, Caldwell, Quinn, they just can't allow that to happen. Set pieces have to be... Oh, set piece. On point. Yeah, if we concede off a set piece, then that will be a major fa or failure for Paul tonight, I think, because that is the one area that we need to have absolutely tight because they have the players that can bang those goals in. Unless it's a superb Cuthbert or Weir strike, if it's just like a header or something, then that will be a serious failure of the defence and also, well, it depends on how Paul sets them up, but I don't think that's how we want to concede tonight at all. It has to, if it's at all it better be from open play. I was actually wrong about that. Ireland are 7-2, to two, so it's bigger than 3. Right. It's over, it's nearly 4s. Um, so, uh, yeah. Scotland 6-4 to four on, the draw is 9-4. to four. I think it could easily be draw in 90 minutes and then... We're going to win. We're going to win. Let's manifest it on OTBM this morning, lads. No negativity. Let's go. All right. Give us your prediction. I'm going to say 2-1 Ireland. I'm going with Shane's positivity. Yeah. Abby Larkin winner. We will take that. Yeah. 11 minutes past 8 this morning uh, obviously the game is live on Off The Ball this evening Joe with you from 7 o'clock kickoff is at 8 and we'll have analysis and reaction on the show tomorrow as well